he could Fala pessoal, estamos ao vivo aqui de novo, o horário horroroso, então o Davidson está dormindo, é, então sem muitas delongas vamos chamar nossa convidada de hoje, Miss Li Jindin, Ni hao Miss Jindin, Xexenin, Huan Ni, Ni hao Ma. Thank you, thank you for having me on. I think I have a little bit of delay on your audio, but it's okay, Don't, no problem. Uh, how are you doing, Ms. Jing Jing? Uh, did, did I say anything correctly on this sentence? Oh. I think, yeah. I, do, I, think I don't have... I'm having an audio issue. Let me reload here, just a second. I'm sorry, as usual, we start very chaotic. <laughs> That's uh let me refresh you here. Okay. We're back. All right. Uh hello Miss Jinjin. Thank you very much for coming to our show tonight. Well, this morning, this afternoon, this <laughs> evening in Brazil. Uh, we Today we intend to talk a little bit about uh, Chinese politics and uh, society and, of course, as a journalist. So for everybody, I'm going to, uh, I have put all the social networks of uh, Li Jingjing in the description. Um, go follow her, of course. Uh, is uh, is it the best uh, place where you prefer to be followed, like uh, X or YouTube? Yeah, so uh, you can find me on X or Twitter. Just search my name, uh, Jing Jing underscore Li. Uh, but actually, Li is my family name, so I normally wow. goes by Li Jing Jing. You can also search my name and find my channel on YouTube. But and if you're also watching. TikTok, Reddit, Instagram, you can also find me by searching my name, Li Jing Jing, or JJ on the road on Instagram. So whichever platform you're using, you'll find me there. <laughs> and you have a very good show on YouTube as well, uh, which is uh, the, what's it called? The Road Talk? Um... Yeah, so uh, my YouTube channel is just my name, Li Jing Jing, but I have two uh, series. One is called Talk It Out with Li Jing Jing. Uh, talk it Yeah. During that show, I will invite guests from around the world to talk about geopolitics, to talk about current affairs. Uh, and also the other show is my travel vlog called JJ on the Road. I just travel everywhere because as a journalist, I always go to different parts of my country and I go travel to different parts of the world. So through my vlog, I just try to show people the local stories, local cultures, help people to understand China and the rest of the world. Yeah, fantastic. And that's what we're trying to do here today a little bit. Uh, try to understand better China, because unfortunately, in Brazil, we have very little to none information about China, at least in the last uh, 30, 40 years, uh, as far as I as I remember school. Uh, yeah, we learned a little bit on school, but you know, normal school, which is uh, what people get some, most of the information they bring for life. We don't have too much information about China. And we're trying to bring this to the Brazilians. And we, uh, I can see we have Kali and Raul online, uh, too early for them, and uh, watching us here tonight. Well, this afternoon, this morning, and late night for them. <laughs> so, uh, 
as we were previously just uh, chatting about, uh, I, mm -hmm. I think we could start talking about the, the Chinese political system because it's uh, it's a very big question for for the Brazilians to understand. I try to understand; it's complicated for me. But in the end, you understand how how is the the, the, the dynamics if you if you look around. So I think we could 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 go just a little briefly about that. Um, how how does it work actually in in, in the end? Mm. So before before that, I want to emphasize that the relationship between China and Brazil, because this I think this is very important uh, as we are speaking now. Mm -hmm. China's Minister of Foreign Affairs is probably flying or already arrived in Brazil. Uh, our Foreign Minister, also China's top most senior diplomat, Wang Yi, will be visiting Brazil from January the 18th, and he will also visit Jamaica. Uh, and this trip was just after he finished visiting several African nations. So this is the first overseas trip for China's foreign minister, and he chose Africa and Latin America. I think that basically shows China's uh, priority in terms of uh, foreign affairs, in terms of diplomatic relations. China's diplomats chose Africa and Latin America, the global south, as, this, as their first destinations. And, um, you know, China and Brazil are the two largest developing countries and also emerging markets in two different parts of the world. So this uh, relationship is very important because these two countries can become the driving force for the growth of Global South. Mm -hmm. And last year, Brazilian President Lula visited China, met our president Xi Jinping in April. And that was, I mean, that trip was so fruitful compared to Lula's visit to the United States just before he visited <laughs> China. So forget about it. <laughs> it was actually it was actually a fantastic and beautiful ceremony for for the President Lula in uh, well Chinese uh, diplomacy is it's very uh, fruitful. It's very it's very vibrant. It's very uh, full of. Uh, uh, small, um, how, how do you say, um, uh, subtle things that you can get. So, for example, uh, the, the, the band sounded uh, um, a music, a Brazilian music called A New Time, mm -hmm. a, a New Era for Lula arriving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very important. And also, if you read uh, readouts from both presidents. And if you read readouts from China's leadership since like several years ago, when they talk about Brazil, they always talk about China and Brazil's partnership could be the best example of China and Latin America cooperation, Global South cooperation, South South cooperation. So, I mean, this, this, this narrative is uh, consistent for years. China always treated Brazil as the most, one of the most important partners in the global south, considering the size of both countries, the influence in their respective regions. So China and Brazil relationship can be a perfect model for driving the global south to become much prosperous. And uh, I know this year, 2024, is also an important year for China-Brazil relationship because this year marks the 50 anniversary of the diplomatic relationship between China and Brazil, because the two countries uh, started their diplomatic relationship in 1974. I mean, this is just like a perfect year. And, the, you know, we are living in a changing world now. Uh, you can feel yes. this strong sentiment from the global south that they want to build a multipolarity, the one new world order, this new a new world order uh, that the global south, the developing nations have a bigger say on the global stage uh, mm -hmm. and, and they no longer want to be dominated and oppressed. So th these two can be a driving force. I think um, since 2019, China, ha and China has become the biggest trading partner for Brazil. And yes. the, the, right, the, the trading volume exceeded um, 
almost 171 uh, billion U.S. dollars. So there's a lot of trade going on between China and Brazil. They are each other's very important uh, partners. And, uh, and also, I hope to stress something that from our president's speech during the 20th party congress that basically shows uh, China's priority, why it's important for China and Brazil and the whole global south to work together. So uh, in, at the speech delivered by President Xi Jinping at the 20th party congress, he said China committed to narrow the gap between global north and global south. And China mm. will continue to invest more resources oh. in global south. They want to build a better, a better world for an equal world where developing nations have have more opportunities to to grow. This True. is the a, a commitment from China's leadership has uh, for 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 a really long time. So I think it's it's. I'm really grateful that you are doing this show to help Brazilian people to understand China's culture. And I hope we will try our best here to help Chinese people understand Brazil because we need to have more corporations, not just yes. not just economically, but also politically. And our leaders are doing that now. And we need also need to have more corporations in terms of cultural exchanges into and more like in terms of people to people exchanges. Yes, sure, sure. Uh, you mentioned something very interesting that there's the 50, 50th anniversary of uh, diplomatic relations with China. Uh, we have, we just yesterday we mentioned to Carl Zha uh, that in uh, a historical fact that in 1964 we had the, the, the military coup in Brazil. And, and I quote because it was a, a political coup. Uh, made by the military group, uh, mm -hmm. which was more or less the same that happened in the entire South, uh, South America and uh, Latin America back at that time, uh, you know, backed by the United States. And that moment, uh, so what uh, So what happened was that the president of Brazil uh, <laughs> simply renounced the 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 position and the the vice president of brazil who should be the the successor for him was outside brazil so that so that was the the political coup so the president mm -hmm. say i'm out the military say okay there is nobody to take care of the country because the vice president is outside so we take we take charge but mm -hmm. the vice president was in china building relations to mutual uh, uh, commerce and, and cooperation with China at that moment. So mm -hmm. that at that moment, when this happened, then of course, Brazil pivoted away from the from the East and, you know, align with the United States mm -hmm. and uh, the Western uh, um, line of thought. Basically, the, the Brazil sold its sovereignty to, to the United States at that point. Mm -hmm. We, we mm -hmm. were getting very ahead for, you know, big relations together with China at the moment. So it's 50 years anniversary. That's because 10 years before we were, you know, uh, yeah. uh, could be removed. 60 years anniversary. It could be, 60. It could be even more, yeah. most likely. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's amazing. The, uh, Wang Yi, uh, it's it's very respectful uh, diplomat uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the fact that he's uh, I've been actually asking myself that for some time, because last year we had uh, Lavrov uh, coming to Brazil. We had uh, a major diplomats uh, from around the planet coming to Brazil. And, I, and I had, we had Lula in China, but we had not received some Chinese uh, uh, foreign uh, diplomats to our country. Uh, and, I, and I've been asking myself that, why, why not yet? And <laughs> now we have it. And yes. top diplomat, and it's it's very important for us. To, yeah, for and sure. it, it's like I mentioned earlier, the first destination is shows the sign, shows the priority of Chinese government. So uh, he visited African nations because uh, that's the tradition for Chinese diplomat uh, that Africa is always the first overseas visit destination. And this year, 
it has been 34th year, 34 consecutive years for China's foreign minister to visit Africa first, mm -hmm. uh, because the relationship, historical relationship between China and Africa. And then after several visiting several African nations, uh, he directly fly to Brazil and Jamaica. And that also shows the priority. He yes. didn't choose North America or Europe. He always chose Latin America, the global South. So, I mean, that's the priority of China's diplomats. That's, that's amazing. And uh, you were telling me that in March, there is a big event on the, on the Chinese, um, uh, what's it called? The, the yeah, so um, uh, I know a lot of people outside of China probably don't know about China's political system or have a lot of questions about China's political system. Well, if you want to understand China's politics and China's political system, uh, first I can tell you it's not what Western mainstream media has been telling you. It's, it's well, not that. <laughs> it's, it's not a dictatorship? Oh, God. <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> You're breaking my heart now. It's not even for real. Yeah, we are so oppressed. We're so oppressed <laughs> that we're being lifted, being lifted out of poverty. Oh my God, how oppressed is that? <laughs> we were forced to have the most cutting edge technology in the world. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so meanwhile, this here is in Europe, the center of the planet, the five G sucks. Yeah. So. If I want to understand China's politics, first uh, remove all what the mainstream media have been telling you and try to understand, look at China uh, from, a, from a different perspective. Uh, try to just look at to understand what it is. And second, um, China's political system is probably a little bit com complicated uh, for many to understand because it's different from, from, from many other countries because it's unique. China's way, we call it a character uh, socialism with char Chinese characteristics, because China find the way to develop uh, through its own history, through its own e exploration. So China is a democracy, but we call it a uh, people's whole process, people's democracy, whole process, people's democracy. And what does it mean? Um, basically, people exercise the power. Uh, people can decide the direction of the country. And uh, why you mentioned the meeting in the March, because in March, uh, every March, there's an annual most important political meeting in China called Two Sessions. Two Sessions refers to two meetings, why it's called a National People's Congress, NPC, or Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, CPPCC. These two together being called Two Sessions. So why these two sessions is so important? Because they are the highest organ of state power and the highest uh, legis uh, consultative body. Mm -hmm. They make the yearly goals for the country. They set the directions for the country for the whole year. Uh, and the deputies from all across China, deputies to this session come from all backgrounds, all ethnic groups, all fields like tech technology, military, economy, art, they all have a deputy to, 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 to come to this meeting so they can bring these suggestions from their respective fields to the central committee and they talk about their suggestion, uh, suggestions, otherwise uh, there's a problem in their our province, there's a problem in our industry, we need to revise that, we need to do that. And also they will vote, they will elect new members to the government. So this, during the two sessions, the deputies from all across China, from all fields, will come here to talk about the country's uh, goal and elect new members to the country. So this is a perfect example, reflection of China's, uh, how China's policy. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Never happened. First time, sorry <laughs> about that. No, it's okay. You're a busy person. <laughs> no. But like this, the meeting in March is perfect example to understand how China's government works and i'm a reporter i'm a reporter that been covering that uh, meeting for five years already and the next year uh, this year will be the sixth year and every year i'll interview deputies from different provinces and uh and last year i wrote an article 
explaining how it works for many who try to understand. So, I mean, to explain China's political system, we need uh, probably another few hours. We need a new whole book to understand it. But uh, so uh, that I briefly told you what it was like. So if you're interested in understand that, like I we we can do another episode in March just to focus sure. on explaining China's politics. Politics. That that would be perfect. We just gonna need need some hours. So in the last five minutes, you told me that uh, uh, um, democracy, where people actually decide the 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 the, the ways of the country, that that's not supposed to be democracy, is it? <laughs> And That's not a Western democracy, but it uh... doesn't sound about right. Uh, and you're also telling me that uh, you, as a journalist, you can cover facts in China. <laughs> I, I, I'm starting to think this is this this wasn't a good idea to call you in the show. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to do be a Western mainstream media, well, mm, <laughs> I can tell yeah. you something. So why the Western mainstream media always getting wrong about China? First, how many of them really want to understand China? Ma very few of them genuinely interested in understanding China. They just come here to uh, uh, frame a narrative, uh, push their agenda, and tell China stories uh, that suits their Western lens. So they always see China th through a Western lens and uh, make a story that make their boss happy. Yeah. And second, and I they saw. Look good. Yeah, I mean, if you uh, on Western mainstream media, you talk about oh, China is like bad. Exactly what their leaders have been telling their people how China it is. If they mm -hmm. make a story like that, they will get a lot of views, and people don't care about the facts. Last year, I was covering the two sessions. I saw the CNN reporter, CNN correspondent at the same venue, making up shots. For example, like uh, her final story, uh, her name is called Selena Wang, uh, uh, CNN former correspondent in China. She made a piece, um, a coverage for CNN, telling people, well, no deputies, no Chinese government officials want to talk to her because they were so afraid talking to Western mainstream media. I was at the same venue. I talked to everybody. Some <laughs> My interview request understandable because as a journalist, you will always be declined by many people, but there are always people accept you. There's so many people accepted my interview on the ground and they didn't even ask which media I'm working for because you got credentials. As long as you got mm -hmm. credentials, you are being approved by the media, right? So they didn't even ask which media I'm working for. So they didn't know I work for a Chinese media and they just talked to me. So I interviewed dozens of deputies. I even took happy selfies with them. They are so friendly, so nice. So how come you uh, didn't get any deputies and I got a dozen? So first, probably it's the problem is you. <laughs> and second, I saw uh, I want to see the shot because I was at the same venue. I understand how she got the shots. She got mm. the shots of the empty field of the Chinese deputies running away from her, running away from her camera. And why is that? Why those deputies are running away from Western mainstream media? Because the Western correspondent wait until the last minute to ask the deputy. And by that time, the deputy was late to catch his shuttle bus. The shuttle bus should take all deputies to their respective hotels. So yeah. you know there were thousands of deputies. They being, uh, they are all being, they they're like a flood uh, coming out of from the from the venue. You can grab anybody because there are like three thousands of them. You can grab anybody. That's how yeah. I grabbed them. She wait until the, there's only one or two person on the field to get an empty shot. And the person was too late for the shuttle bus. So she asked that person, uh, oh, I see she's running away. Okay. No, 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 I'm sorry. It's just that uh, I don't know what happened here. The internet uh, yesterday and today are, are a little bit weird. So we went offline for uh, a couple of seconds, but we're back. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay, sorry okay. to... 
it's okay. I just want to explain how some Western media got the shots of of、uh, like Ch- China's officials running away from Western media because they 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 set up a scene. They wait until the last minute for the deputies was running to his shuttle bus. But not run, running from away from reporters because all other reports, all other hundreds of reporters got interviews. Only the CNN didn't、no. get interviews. Why? Because well,、uh, she set up the scene. And we see things like、uh, last year, for example, Lavrov、uh, from Russia.、Um, CNN、uh, asked some question, and he just say, "Look, write whatever, and、uh, I'm not going to waste my time answering you because you're going to write whatever anyway." So. Yeah. Just, just write whatever you want. It doesn't matter. And、uh, in in the Putin session last year, also in the end of the year, the four hour session of、uh, question and answer,、uh, a BBC reporter was asking for a question for a long time, and he was not granted. And he was like, "See, they don't they don't answer BBC. Well, they're just tired."、Mm-hmm. It's just a waste of time. They're going to write anything anyway, and、yeah. uh, even I mean, if if I was,、uh, even if it, that was not the case, let's let let's put it like that. If if that was not the case, that the people were not late for for the bus for the shuttle, even if that was not the case, I wouldn't waste my time at this point. I wouldn't be. <laughs> No, I, I, yeah, that's that's something that we put here in the channel. We have no intention whatsoever to call people that already have a, a high view on mainstream, unless it's a person that we decide this person has a point, is interesting, and it's willing to speak、uh, decently with us.、Uh, that's what I think. I mean, I, I would just not waste my time. Well, you know, go ahead, <laughs> write whatever. You're gonna do it anyway. Yeah. It's in the end, it's a waste of time. While uh, uh, serious people uh, uh, will have、uh, hours of conversation with that, with no problem. But but it's interesting. Sometimes it's interesting to see how creative they are to make their propaganda.、Uh, but、uh, it's fun. It's it's fun to watch. It's,、uh, like I, I, yeah. But I, I this would, is not、I、trying to do. Even... Do... Okay. Sorry, sorry.、Continue. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead.、Uh, no, I was, I wasn't just trying. I wasn't trying to discredit all Western mainstream media.、Uh, there are some good reporters from Western me- mainstream media and very senior, respectful reporters who did amazing reports on many events across the world. But、yeah. um, in the past few years.、Uh, What I saw from the Western mainstream media, and especially on the topics on China, where any country that they are, their government doesn't like,、mm-hmm. they are just like all kinds of lies, all kinds of uh, uh, bias, all kinds of、uh, stereotypes, and、yeah. that's the reason I became very active on social networks on these platforms. Like I'm telling my own stories, I'm telling the true stories of my culture, my country. Stop. Making up lies about my country. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that's more or less why we started the, this project here. Because、uh, I, I was just looking around and say, "This is bullshit. This is that's <laughs> not how it is." I, I mean, I, I'm not there, but I know a little bit enough to understand that this is not how it is. <laughs> and、uh, as you said, there was,、uh, and it's very interesting this situation about China because even uh, uh, you probably know、uh, Tucker Carlson that used to be Fox and was removed from Fox <laughs> to speak out about Ukraine.、Uh, even Tucker <laughs> Carlson, don't、uh, worry.、Uh, even Tucker Carlson, who is uh, uh, an extremely uh,、um, well, first of all, he's declared Trump supporter. So.、Uh, Over there, I think there's a, a credibility because I know where he's.、Uh, I know what he's talking. I I, I know that he's、uh, he's going to speak good about Trump. That's okay. I, I might not agree with Trump. Trump. I don't like it. I don't like him. But at least this guy is honest enough to to go out and say, I'm pro Trump. That's、mm-hmm. that's a good start.、Uh, but he goes. Com- Completely out of the mainstream to speak out about Ukraine and all the problems, Russia,、uh, the, the the what the United States is doing wrong, and this is not taking them somewhere. And then he makes a, 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 an entire video about you know that that disease that we had a couple of years ago,、uh, and he goes 
point by point connecting Fauci to the uh, research of uh, potent, uh, uh, how's it called, uh, upgrading potency of uh, viruses and connecting the university in the United States with the Wuhan lab and all that. And it's China fault. And I was like, come on, man, you, you did all the work. You did all the work. In the 45 of the second half, you just decided to pivot away and speak bad about China. Why? Why are you doing that? It makes no <laughs> sense for me. Uh, and well, I mean, th these people lose a little bit of credibility, even if they are highly credible at some other areas. Uh, it's just at some point it, uh, it, it, it goes away for me. We're having yeah. some glitches, just, just speaking to the people that's going to watch us. Okay. Well, we, we are uh, connected from Italy to China, and we have some glitches in the video, in the cameras uh, from time to time. I mean, I don't know what to do. So just, you know, every, <laughs> every so often, Li Jingjing will blink. And I don't know why this is happening in this computer. Is because that because of your ones... internet? It, it can be. Yesterday was, was bad. And today oh. it's uh, because it's been rainy for for a couple of days. I mean, as I told uh. you, crappy 5G and crappy internet in in the West. They should get back to <laughs> uh, switches and yeah. Our internet is quite, pretty pretty good because we uh, I use 5G on my phone and here, well. Uh, well, internet speed here, anyway, is pretty fast. <laughs> so. That's uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I have I have a Chinese friend. She's um, she's in Beijing. She she worked for a physics lab. Um, we used to work together every now and then at CERN and at some projects. Uh, always from uh, away and I mean, we always we never had the issues with uh, with internet. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will just try to refresh this because the other one is the one that's going to instagram is doing all right uh, just this one is it's a little bit weird okay so we, we are about uh, 40 minutes we can yeah time time flies time flies on on Okay, cool, great. Uh, let me just, I refreshed you, it should be back here. I don't know why it's not. Okay, you're back, fantastic. Uh, all right, so yeah, we are talking about the, the, the media, the Western media and journalism. And uh, so many things that, yeah, so many things that they got wrong. And my opinion about that is, well, first of all, yeah, of course, they have to make the boss happy and uh, make them look good. And it's, it's getting pretty hard <laughs> in recent <laughs> years. Uh, and uh, at the same time, yes, there is the, the, the ignorance of people. And I, and I put myself on, the, on this position because, as I told you before, uh, we we don't we know very little about uh, about China, and I, I would like to understand a little a little bit about Chinese society as as uh, as it is today, especially because I had a conversation with this friend of mine as I, that I just told you about, and her answers were amazing. I mean, I, I was uh, completely with with what I heard it was nothing that I would expect something great and something very good from the Chinese people at this moment but it was something that I, that I was completely well so I, I would like to understand how's the, the 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 Chinese society at this moment the people the people's feelings about the country about the 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 the, the rest of the planet we already talk about politicians, and I would like to understand a little bit and, and the knowledge of the, the, the Chinese about outside China, of course, the average Chinese, I would say. Okay. Okay. Uh, is my connection good? Your connection is about okay. I have a bit of delay, but I can hear you. 
Okay, uh, because I found like your voice is on and off as well when you were asking the question. Oh. So I hope my connection is good, uh, or I can. I, I can hear you perfectly. Okay. I uh, okay. Maybe we can both reload our cameras, our the the site, so sure. we can go back to what should be. Okay, I will be back very soon. All right. Just a few seconds. So stay tuned, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Stay tuned also. <laughs> Refresh this. Yeah, you're back. Yeah, you look you look better, I think. Okay, so yeah, uh, yes, perfect. So talking about China, right? So I can tell you, I'm, I, I'm a Chinese born and raised in China. I studied and traveled to other countries. So I also saw, I mean, the outside world, the Western world, developed world or underdeveloped world. So I can tell you the changes in China uh, from my own stories. For example, when I was a kid, I was a malnourished kid. My parents didn't have enough nutrition to feed me, didn't have enough protein to feed me. And probably also because the lack of the knowledge of how to probably raise a kid back in the days. But now I'm in my 30s, I'm overnourished. I'm always worried about how, sh how can I lose weight because I keep gaining weight every day with too much, with too much nutrition to eat. And this story happened uh, within my lifetime. I'm, I'm in my thirties. When I was a kid, there was no flushing toilets in our houses. There was uh, in many areas in remote China, in remote villages. They only got the electricity a few years ago. Um, so, but now, you know, China has uh, some world leading cutting edge technologies. We have our own space stations. Uh, we have 5G coming as Huawei. We have bullet trains, the fastest uh, railways. And this is also the changes within I mean, just like three decades, four decades. This is the dramatic changes for a lot of people in China. And I'm a journalist. I travel around China, I talk to people from all corners. So if you go to other regions of China, uh, if you're not just going to Beijing and Shanghai and uh, Guangzhou, this this very rich metropolitans, if you go to other regions, you will see different stories. So you know, China lifted 800 million people out of extreme poverty by 2022. That's a remarkable achievement. Uh, the world's poverty reduction, which uh, the mission could be completed was, was largely because of China lifted 800 million people out of extreme poverty. And why, you know, that's just a number, but why I'm a journalist, why I actually go to different villages and see the poverty and see the, the diverse lifestyles, I got to understand how amazing how much um, dedication it requires for the government to put so much effort to help the people. Because China is so large and uh, we have 1.4 billion people. And you know, every province is poor for a different reason. Uh, many for uh, geographic reasons. For, for example, Tibet is because of its high altitude and mm. um, the extreme living conditions environmental conditions make it hard to 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 make everything there uh, and uh, some regions because of its in steep in steep mountains it's very difficult for local villagers to leave their hometowns and some regions are too dry some regions lack of uh, natural resources so i mean each province is poor uh, because of a different reason so that means if the government want to help those people get out of poverty they need to design very specific very different policies in different regions mm -hmm. uh in, in tibet they need to uh, solve the illiteracy because when when 
Tibet was liberated before nineteen uh, before nineteen sixty. Ninety percent of the population was illiterate, but now everybody go to school. There's no illiteracy except for the very old, very senior citizens, and uh, the, they were lifted out of poverty, of course, by twenty twenty two. And some other regions, uh, for example, Guangxi villagers, different ethnic groups were trapped in the mountains mm. because of the, the mountains were so steep. The geographic conditions were so difficult for them. But now they build, the government built roads, railways, connecting the entire province and connecting entire country. And the roads were built in every village. The roads lead to each household. So the farmers can bring fruits, their products from their backyard to their front door, easier to, to sell and do businesses. Mm -hmm. So I mean, these infrastructures were brought to the mountains to, to make it easier for villagers to live. There are so many different things you will see. And you know how incredible, what a coordination you need to, 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 to design, what kind of policy you need to design, how much dedication you need to put into this mission to lift so many people out of extreme poverty. So when you look at that, the reality in China, I have I had, and you will have, you see that, you have the another level of appreciation for the government yeah. to design such a policy. And, you know, in the past few decades, uh, the the governing party of China is the CPC, Communist, China, Communist Party of China. But uh, even though the president has been changing, the government official has been changing, but the mission of serving the people, lifting people out of poverty has never been changed in the past 40 years. Mm -hmm. The different, different governments keep carrying this mission and uh, will design, will upgrade the policy, depends on the situation developed to, if the situation developed into a new phase, they will upgrade and change uh, the policy accordingly. I mean, they carry this mission for, for decades, for 100 years of existence for the CPC. Yes. So how marvelous is that? And I say that not because of the, like what's the mainstream media telling you because they, they are, it says propaganda <laughs> because I'm a Chinese living in this reality my life has been changed by this policy my fellow people Chinese people from across China has our life has been changed by this policy so of course we feel so proud and Western media think tank are so surprised to find out that Chinese people actually support Chinese government. They find out, whoa, China actually supports CPC? Of course we support. <laughs> Our life got so much better because of the government. So why don't we? Um, this is the reality we've been living in. And um, um, I would say the young generations in China are even more proud of their country, their culture, um, because well, China's culture didn't just exist today. It existed for 5,000 years, but we experienced some horrible, horrible 100 years. We call it 100 year humiliation because of the invasions from foreign powers um, and our people being oppressed, being slaughtered by all countries from Japan, from UK, from from uh, Italy, from France, from everybody. But like we suffered over this 100 year humiliation. But now within a sh relatively short period of time, we made this country the world's second GDP. And from a war torn, very wow. impoverished, First. very poor country. Yeah. Well, first, first. Yeah. But let's, uh, first uh, biggest GDP, but let's just pretend. <laughs> so uh, because China is very large and uh, uh, we have a huge population. So uh, as our leaders have been stressed at multiple government meetings, um, China has been entering a different phase. We already lifted people out of extreme poverty. We made China's GDP like the, the, the world leading. We made China a great big economy, but that, that, that doesn't mean we, 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 we gotta stop there. The new task, new mission for China is, the new challenge for China is the imbalance, imbalanced development, imbalanced uh, income. 
So mm. the government, the CPC, has been stressed in the 20th Party Congress and the every nearly annual two sessions. The new target is to uh, to solve this unequal distribution of wealth. So that means that means China is not controlled by wealthy elites. The capitalists mm -hmm. cannot control, cannot dictate policies, cannot dictate uh, the, the 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 country's uh, like direction, unlike some countries in the world. So, uh, <laughs> for example, we made some policies in the past few years uh, to to uh, to to um, stop some billionaires, some elites. To take the to take the interest benefits from away from from working class. For example, one mm, big change uh, last year was the uh, the close down, the cancel all the extracurriculum schools, the schools that provide uh, extra education like on science or on math, on English for students. So students can go to those uh, schools to get extra uh, hours of study from the best teachers in the country after school. But that, that, that industry has been booming in China for decades. But suddenly they, they, they forbid that last year. Why? Because the rich people have been taking the best teachers from government schools away to the private schools. So that means the rich kids from rich family can have the best resources to stay up front, to be forever on the top. But the education system in China is a very key platform for, uh, for to give up equal footing for everyone. A lot mm -hmm. of uh, Great scientists, great doctors in China actually come from very impoverished family. They probably come from a, a very uh, impoverished family in a small village in remote China. But because they are spend, they are so hardworking. They study hard. They got a doctor doctor degree. They made a great achievements in their respective fields. Some became space uh, astronaut, uh, like our first female astronaut comes from. Uh, a very impoverished family. Uh, last year, we had our first non-engineering, uh, well, civilian, civilian astronaut. He's, cool. He didn't serve in this, uh, the, the military. He just signed up uh, for this job and be because he's so marvelous in his fields. Uh, he's a great engineer cool. engineer, and uh, in science, uh, the science that I don't really understand because he's too <laughs> smart. He's a civilian and he's short-sighted he has eye problems normally are not will best will make you cannot person, go to the military yeah but that's that was a problem for him because um he's too outstanding in his field and he comes from a very a poor village that was just lifted out of poverty in 2022 that village in Yunnan province that was just lifted out of poverty in 2022 the whole village was proud of him they had the village has a first civilian astronaut I mean, so wow. you can make a great achievement. You can be uh, make to the top. You don't have to be from a rich family, elite family, to be the top of the industry. That's because education system in China gave everybody an equal footing, an equal playing field, where everybody change your background. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait! You're telling me that there is meritocracy <laughs> in China? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> No, look. Um, so, uh, so for for the people that uh, the, that follow our channel, they will understand that is uh, that is all you know a little bit of cynicism from uh, from my side. The, what uh, what is very interesting, and that I would like to put this point here, uh, is that the things that you tell me are I will not say exactly the same because it would it would sound like uh, you know a repetition, but. The things that you tell tell me are absolutely compatible with the things that my friend, as I told you before, told me when I asked her because I was curious about China to a level that mm -hmm. I, I called her, and we you know we're not best friends, so it was and it's always very very difficult to engage in this type of conversation because. As we talked we talked before, there is a lot of stereotypes, there is a lot of prejudice that it's imposed on us by the mainstream media as it's, uh, as it's known. So sometimes we made mistakes of thinking wrong because we learn wrong. Uh, 
But for example, it's totally yeah, understandable. Yes. Totally understandable. Can I add something? Yeah, yeah, sure. Because sure. of a lot of people outside of China, particularly in the West, and even though you're from Brazil, and many people from Latin America and Africa, uh, they don't understand that China. They believe in the Western mainstream media. I totally understand that because the West spends so much money to spread the lies, to put spread the propaganda, to brainwash people believing in their narrative. I can tell you, uh, anyone who's watching who is having a doubt about what I'm saying, just Google, uh, go to U U U.S. State Department's website to search Countering China Influence Fund. Countering, actually they use the word, countering malign influence of the PRC. Malign influence? I don't know why, why it's malign, why it's bad, because China is building ports and railways for other countries. But when, when if you read that bill from the U.S. government, you will see the U.S. government has been spending billions of dollars every year across the world to force think tanks, media, some individuals to write negative stories about China. Yeah. It's not just it's not a small amount of money. Let me let, I think. Let me quickly check how much uh, <laughs> money we spend. Um, I think they spend a hundred. Okay, okay. So this is new newest bill. You can Google it on U.S. State Department. This found there is authorized to be appropriate three hundred and twenty-five million U.S. dollars for each of fiscal years from twenty twenty-three through twenty twenty-seven. Over three hundred million U.S. dollars every year. That's just, just to, your official to, numbers. Yeah. So they are giving the money to to media, to think tanks, or those who caught independent to write negative NGOs. stories about China. Yes, of course. So and, and you know, there's so many countries from Africa and Latin America have found out. Uh, like it is true because uh, I think a few years ago there's a Zimbabwe newspaper, a story on the Zimbabwe newspaper called The Herald. A reporter found out that the U.S. government through their embassies in their country are providing this so-called media trainings for journalists or independent journalists in the name of training, right? Media training, but uh, they were just tell, uh, giving money for each stories these reporters wrote, uh, uh, negative <laughs> stories about China. For example, negative stories on China's project, BRI project in their countries. And uh, they even sponsored some organized protests in front of those companies. So, I mean, considering that much money and effort spent by the U.S. government and Western countries, of course, uh, people like from from Latin America, from the rest of the world will have a negative uh, in image about China. That's the yeah. U.S. money speaking. In, in, <laughs> in uh, Latin America, well, I, I will talk about Brazil. So, uh, uh, for example, when I moved from Brazil to Europe, I never got uh, cable TV here in Europe because, I mean, cable TV in Europe is, you know, Europe's TV. So kind of sucks. <laughs> Uh, but in Brazil, uh, when you put a cable TV at your house, what you get? You get Fox, you got CNN, you got ES, uh, ESPN, HBO, blah, 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 blah. So cable TV in Brazil for the last uh, 30, 40 years, it's been basically United States satellite uh, um, put to, to cable and delivered to your house. So this is one point. We got all the influence from American TV there, which is already, I mean, Hollywood is a big industry of, uh, of uh, uh, propaganda. <laughs> but uh, what we got in Brazil is that. Plus, uh, um, we are a poor country, you know. Many Brazilians don't have the opportunity to leave the country at all. I mean, not even going, and well, you know, for the last uh, 10 years, you can go a little bit to Argentina because the, 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 the money there is it's worth very little for us uh but you know by choice they always go to where disneyland uh, new york paris and and i mean uh, you, you you cannot blame on it because you know these this these guys they they really propagandize the 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 you know paris the eiffel tower been there nice place smells weird but it's okay 
Italy, it's funny to be here, for example. Uh, but this is propagandized in Brazil. So they would never, and now I'm seeing more Brazilians going to China. This is very interesting. This is yeah. starting to be very interesting. As yeah, so probably I have, we will I have several Brazilian friends in Beijing. Nice. There are more, yeah, there are more and more Brazilians. There are more and more Latin Americans coming to China from last year. So I already have many Latino friends here. There's a strong growing Latin, Latin cultures in China as well. So you will be, you will love here. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Learning the, learning the local culture here, but also finding your own cultures here. So you enjoy it. I'm not going to China to search for Brazilian culture. <laughs> I already have Sometimes enough. Sometimes it's good to, to eat some Latin food, right? We yeah. have some really, really good um, uh, restaurant um, that serves Mexican foods, uh, Latin music everywhere. So many Latin dance parties across the cool. country. So yeah, you will find the nicest, the nicest. Uh, you will find a, a, the nicest or oh, very st because this food approved by my latino friends even they said well oh, this is good uh taco this is good guacamole this is good music <laughs> i believe in them just like when you I want to find the best Chinese trust. restaurant in europe you trust the chinese there so yeah <laughs> sure uh whatever so you're looking for you'll find it here yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I was talking to, to Philippe Durant and he was telling me that, I mean, he could get mostly everything over there. And you know what? That's that's the funny part. When I'm looking for uh, Brazilian ethnical food, let's call it like that, um, things that I miss from Brazil and it's very hard to find here, I go to Chinese shops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's where you get good things here really uh chinese people love food the chinese people love the making food so um and just uh i think in december i had uh, some gatherings with my local friends here international friends and i mean just uh, we first like they first have the the dinner at a Georgian restaurant and then next at an Indian restaurant and the other day at a Mexican food restaurant and all these restaurants are like the most authentic food from Georgia, India or, or, or Latin countries. So I mean, that shows how international Beijing and Shanghai are becoming. You will yeah. find all the cultures here. So yeah, feel free to come here. I'm looking forward for it, actually. But as, as I was telling you, the the the, the history the history you told me, for example, about the malnut uh, the malnutrition. Uh, my friend was telling me, for example, that when she was born, and she's about my age, forty something, when she was born, uh, her mother her mother was uh, making her clothes because they could not yeah. afford to buy things. So I don't know if they had problems with uh, with food. Maybe it was a closer province from uh, from Beijing. Maybe not not those type of problems, but they were not uh, uh, they didn't have access to to clothes, to many things. And as you mentioned, the the the, the space station guy, the the, the astronaut, uh, she was raised in a in a in a poor village. And she went up to, you know, work on the main uh, um, um, physics laboratory in China. So, I mean, she went from very poor to, you know, very. Yeah. And she was telling me things uh, very interesting, like, you know, I, I don't understand many things. Uh, for example, everybody in my work, they have one or two apartments of their own. While here in Europe, it's, 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 it's a nightmare to get an apartment or even to rent an apartment. It's, it's a complete nightmare. And well, so, so many things that you just described was, you know, more or less exactly the story that she was telling me about her own life. So that's, that, you know, it starts to build trust on the, of course, I believe in her. <laughs> it's not like, and one yeah. thing that was very interesting is that when I started asking about politics to her, she, what she told me was, look, I can tell you whatever I want. I just don't know. I don't care that much about politics. My reasoning yeah. is I'm paying someone by taxes 
to do the, to do this job. I'm not supposed to worry about it. Yeah, that that's a very mind blowing I mean, it, perspective. Not everybody understand or even interested in politics. That's understandable. I I understand politics because I'm a journalist covering politics, so I need to study and read books and find out. So um, probably most people um, are not interested in politics. And probably cannot explain to you how the government works, how China policy works, but. Uh, you know, for most people, they don't need to understand politics as long as their life is getting better, their lives is good. That means the the system works, the government works, right? Yeah. I'm sure exactly. you. Most people don't care about the policies as long as I can, I can, I can I have all my necessities. I don't need to worry about where, uh, how, whether I can afford my next meal. I don't need to worry about the price, about everything. So. As long as their life is good, they don't need to care about it. And so a lot of those people who said China is collapsing, China is bad, ask Chinese people, if China is so bad, why uh, Chinese people are so happy? Why are they laughing? Why their life, why, why we are so safe living here? We, one thing I always feel like the shock from audiences from everywhere, no matter which country they're from, whether they're from America, uh, Latin America, Africa, Europe, was that it's so safe to live in China. They just cannot believe it. I, as a woman, I can walk alone in the middle of the night, whether it's 12 p.m., 1 a.m., 2 p.m. I feel so safe. I can walk alone on the streets. I don't need to worry about a thing. And uh, if I go to, say, I'm going to an event, a meeting, um, I can leave my laptop on the table and go to talk to somebody else and come back an hour later, my laptop will still be there. Hmm. I mean, that's the sense of security we feel here. I mean, that's, and it, it's, it's surprising to find out almost, almost like nobody outside of China can feel the same level of security. No. <laughs> it's, it's very it's, it's very difficult actually yes uh, here in europe uh, i would say that uh, we're living here for about eight years uh, i would say that eight years ago five years ago maybe maybe even three years ago it, the, the 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 safety feeling was much higher yeah it's not it's not dangerous it's not i mean i still can go out at night uh, mostly you can uh, walk around at night but um, it, we start to see a little bit of uh, weird movements in brazil i'm not yeah. uh, i'm not even going to talk about it because it's not <laughs> safe at all uh, uh, i heard from my friends from brazil yeah it's a different um, uh, situation but it's it's getting more I think a lot of more countries are having the same issues. America, America, the most developed countries in the world. I went there in, in October. Uh, it was scary. We didn't dare to walk along on the street. So, I mean, that's, and many other European countries are facing, the, the problem is rising. It's not that threatening yet, but it's rising. Um, and uh, except for some like North European countries are quite safe, like Switzerland, yes, yes. Denmark, Norway, they are very safe. Uh, the, we all basically have that kind of safety, that sense of safety uh, in China. But uh, North Europe have less people, and we have like 1.4 billion people. We are so crowded, the city is so crowded, but like we are so safe, you don't need to worry about things. <laughs> yeah, that's also something that she told me about. Uh, just to to point that out. So, I mean, yeah. you two probably talk with each other before the show and get the <laughs> the, the thing together. Oh. So, no, yeah. no, of if, course, yeah, I'm kidding. If, so, no, no. If probably wasn't media will tell you, see, they are coordinated propaganda. They just tell yeah, the same exactly. thing that Chinese government is telling them. But come on, if you ask every Chinese, if they tell you the same. Like very similar things, how our lives have been changed, how we like our culture, how the safe the country is. Yeah, it must be true. So it, you can. I, I invite you to come to China, to travel to China, and see for yourself, and talk to us, and yes, uh, see sure. how we really feel. Yeah, yeah, sure, exactly. Uh, as I was telling you before, exactly when I see these traveling videos, and it's not geopolitics, it's traveling, just someone that put a backpack and go around in China. Yeah. 
what mm-hmm. I see, it's a very vibrant society. You know, people out in the night, uh, the, 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 the one couple went to a beach city. I don't know exactly where. I don't remember. Uh, but, you know, you have in the beach all these uh, um, igloos, you know, the, the camping tents. And people mm-hmm. are just spending the night on the beach. That's unimaginable. In Copacabana, one of the most famous beach in the planet, it's unimaginable to do such things. Well, people do, yeah. but for me, it's un- it's unimaginable. Mm-hmm. Well, it is vibrant. There are a lot of things going on. Um, um, I would say China is changing very fast. We yeah. there are a lot of things going on here, and um, every year I feel this country uh, something is different. The technology is more advanced. And uh, like a lot of things happen, we are using daily now. It's become many technologies has become our part of our life that we use every day. Didn't even exist five years ago, ten years ago. So there are a lot of things going on. Yeah. And I interviewed um, an expert uh, last month. You know, the he said for you know the the rationale for many foreign companies to stay in China has changed. Um, it's more than just making money here in China's market. It's important for them to stay in China to catch up with uh, <laughs> the either it's a new technology, either it's a new like stuff. It's important to catch up to see what's yeah. going on. Uh, because, like, so I think that, that's, a uh, that's why a lot of people change. come to China. Yeah, that's a really big paradigm change. Yeah. Very interesting. So we are about one hour and 20 minutes already. Jesus, oh. this, 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 time flies. Do you want to go a little bit more or do you think we can call it a day here and uh, maybe get uh, another day? I do. We can get another day because, you know, because the sun is going down, uh, going down. So my lighting is, is I guess, more <laughs> it's less and less fade, lighting. Yes. Yeah, so my image is a little bit blurry than before, just because of the I'm facing window and now there's no lighting yeah. for my face. So, well, I don't want to continue going, but later you probably won't see me clearly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I I haven't even started what I had planned for today, but I think we we cover a very good ground here. And if we start mm-hmm. something, we if we jump to another subject, it would require at least another hour. So I would yeah, I would say probably. we could call it a day here, wrap it up this video, and sure. um, we can appoint uh, another time. We're gonna appoint for March to talk about the, the what's it called? It's a very sure. big. Uh, uh, whole process people's democracy ah yeah people's democracy that's it yeah. uh, we're gonna talk back in march maybe in the meantime mm-hmm. we can just have a, a quick one uh, every now and then if you want sure. and sure. Uh, so i will thank you very much as i appreciate i have not introduced myself properly my name uh, officially here in the ch- in, in the video my name is marcelo vilasa my friend David Sondatman is not present because he's probably asleep at this time in Brazil, uh, as should our audience. But we have Kali here that comes uh, strength in the morning to watch <laughs> me, to watch us. Uh, and I uh, would like to thank you very much for your presence, uh, for accepting the invitation. It's been a pleasure talking to you for today and a pleasure to meet you. And Colin say goodbye. Um, and he wants to go to China as well. Uh, and hope to see you next time. You want to have uh, some last uh, considerations? No, uh, I just want to thank you for having on, for inviting me. And um, uh, I think we need more of this and more of this between yes. our peoples, between. Chinese people, Brazilian people, Italian people, people from around the world. We just need to have this people to people communications and people to people connections. There's so much lies on media. There's so much propaganda on the media. Uh, If you don't know what to believe, I think the best way to do it is just talk to people, understand, 
genuinely understand each other. Yeah. And uh, when we actually genuinely understand each other, I mean, the 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 propaganda won't work. So let's start exactly. to build connections between us. Let's build more connections. That's the main goal of this channel. So good. We have another connection. Yeah. So thank you very <laughs> much. And I wish you a great day. A uh, great, great okay. end of the day and beginning of the day for me. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, guys, to like, share, subscribe, subscribe, comment, and follow Li Jingjing. Uh, so it's Jing Jing Li. Li Jingjing is fine. I goes by Li Jingjing. Yeah. Okay, so follows Li Jingjing in her socials, uh, especially on X and here in YouTube. Follow her programs are very good. Okay. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay. See you next time.